Hello everyone. The first time I made the video for this, it was about 38 minutes long and that's not okay. So I've cut some things out and I'm going to try this again. Uh, so this is the second part for section 2.3. So it's going to be 2.3b is where we're at. First thing, it says completely factor the function below by dividing out the given factors. So these would be the given factors to expose the remaining factors. All right. First off, this whole premise is the degree is 3. So it's assuming that the thing can break into three factors. And you're told two of them, x minus 2 and x plus 3. What they're suggesting is, is that you divide those out and it will expose the remaining factor. So since these things are linear, their degree is 1, I can do them synthetic with synthetic division. And you do them sequentially. You do one, then you do the other. So uh, I'll do the x minus 2 first. So it's what's making it 0. Just driving that point home. All right, I know you can look at that. But sometimes, let's say you had 3x minus 7 as the factor. It's not 7 you're using. It's 7 thirds is what you would use. OK, that's not this case, but I digress. Learning why I'm being so thorough and always saying what makes it zero. All right, here goes. 3, 2, negative 19, 6, drop to 3, 6, 8, 16, negative 3, oops, negative 6, 0. If this is indeed a factor, your remainder must be zero. If it's anything other than zero, you've either done something wrong or this is not a factor. Then, Take the next one, negative 3, and do the division on that. Drop the 3, negative 9, negative 1, 3, 0. Again, it's a factor because the remainder is 0, and you've got remainder number x. So your answer, the third term is 3, x minus 1. So the three factors are those two and this one. There you go. If it asked for zeros, then you're setting each of them equal to zero. So those are the factors. The zeros would be 2, negative 3. Set this equal to zero. Add the 1, divide by 3, and you get a third. So those are the three facts, sorry, three zeros, and those are the three factors. Okay. This one, given this polynomial, and two of the factors are these two, complete the following task. First, verify these things are indeed factors. So what they mean is divide them out. So one after the other, you're going to divide them out just like we did before on the previous page. So 8, negative 14, negative 71, negative 10, 24, as you guys can read. I don't know why I'm saying those out loud. I guess give me something to do. Drop the 8, um, negative 16. So that would be what? Negative 30, positive 60. So that would be negative 11. That would be positive 22, so 12, negative 24, 0. So the remainder is 0. Life is good. Do the next division right after it. So 4 is what you're going to use. Drop the 8. 32, so 2, 8, negative 3, negative 12, 0. So once again, um, it's a factor because the remainder is 0, and you're left with remainder number x, x squared. So what you're left with is 8x squared plus 2x minus 3. Find the remaining factors. So it's telling you the thing's going to factor. So factor it. I know it's a little bit hard because it's not a leading coefficient to 1. My guess it's going to be a 2x and a 4x. The end is going to be a 1 and a 3. Whether the 3 goes here or here, I don't know. i got to try it. It's multiplying to negative 3, so how about plus, minus? So I force the F in FOIL. I force the L in FOIL by picking those numbers. I need to check the O and the I. Whoops. The O and the I to see if it gives me the middle. So outside, negative 6x. Inside, 4x. Gives me a negative 2x. So I'm close. I'm just off by a sign. So, whoops, grab the eraser, get rid of the sign. So this one, 
is the minus, and this one is the plus. So those would be the remaining factors. Write the original polynomial completely factored. Okay, x plus 2, x minus 4, 2x minus 1, and 4x plus 3. They would be the original polynomial completely factored. List all the real zeros. Okay, so I'm taking all of those and setting them equal to zero. You know, and I hope you don't need me to actually do it. Set them equal to zero. So negative 2, 4, set it equal to zero, positive a half, and negative 3 fourths, heck of a 3. You graph the polynomial on your calculator and confirm that that is indeed that these are indeed zeros. So I'm going to pause it, get the calculator out. All right, you guys, I got it graphed. What you're looking for on your calculator is if, and this is a big if, a huge, ginormous if, if your zeros are real, zeros equal x-intercepts. If they're real. So now look, negative 2, negative 1, 2. There's that one. Four, here it is. One half, right there. And negative three quarters, right there. So these are indeed zeros. Now that's just looking at the graph. It just says, graph the uh, original on the thing. It didn't say use your table or anything like that. It just said graph it and look at it. Now that's a pretty weak confirmation, meaning is that actually, you know, 3.974 rather than it actually being Four, you can't tell from the graphs. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of a weak confirmation, but it's trying to illustrate. The point is it's trying to illustrate that real zeros are indeed x-intercepts, okay? That they're synonyms, all right? Okay, to get you to working towards a list of possible zeros, and I'm going to work through these things uh, hopefully as clearly and as quickly as I can. I first want you to multiply these two out. So that would be 6x squared outside plus 10x, inside minus 9x, last minus 15. So you get 6x squared minus 1x minus 15. What are the zeros of this polynomial? You take the factors and set them equal to zero. So 2x minus 3 equals zero, and 3x plus 5 equals zero. So your zeros are going to be 3 halves and negative 5 thirds. Those are your two zeros. Now, looking at these two zeros, I'm going to focus on this one first. Where did the 2 come from in the denominator? So when you're looking at 3 halves as a 0, where did the 2 come from? It came from the 2 that was right here. And you ended up dividing it. You added the 3 to the other side. And then you divided by 2. That 2 came from the front, which comes from the 6th. I should have erased the whole thing. 6x squared minus 1x minus 15. This 2 right here comes from the 6x squared in the original polynomial. It came from this 2 right here if you look at it as factors. But if you're looking at it as a polynomial, this 2 was a factor of that 6. Where did the 3 come from in 3 halves? We'll go back to this. When you multiplied this with this one, this 3 right here was a factor of the negative 15. So the 3 comes from a factor of the last number. The denominator came from a factor of the leading coefficient. The 3 was a factor of the negative 15, the last number. Okay, looking at negative 5 thirds. Where did the negative 5 come from? The negative 5, when you went and solved, 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. You subtract the 5 over, and then you divide it by 3. That negative 5 came from here, 
which when you look at it as a polynomial, it was a factor of negative 15, because these two things multiplied together to give you negative 15. So the negative 5 comes from the negative 15. The numerator came from the end number, just like this one did. Where did this 3 come from? This 3 came from here, which comes from when you multiply the two leading terms together, which gives you the 6. So the 3 is also a factor of the leading coefficient. So numerators are factors of the end. Denominators are factors of the leading coefficient. So let me ask you this question. Could 7 fifths be a 0 for this polynomial? And your answer should be absolutely not. Because when you have a 0, the numerator must be a factor of the end, and the denominator must be a factor of the leading coefficient. It has to. It, it, it has to. I mean, when you look at, I multiplied these two things together and got this. Then I asked you, what are the zeros? And where did the numbers in the numerator denominator come from? They came from the front number and the back number. The 7 and the 5, there's no way. There's nothing I could multiply 5 minus, 5x minus 7 by and get this thing. It's not going to happen. <coughs> okay, at least not nicely. Um, same thing with negative 4 nines. The negative 4 is not a factor of the negative 15, and 9 is not a factor of 6. So again, it doesn't work. So using that to come up with, I'm wanting you to write a list of all the polynomials, sorry, all the zeros that are possible from this. Not the actual. We know the actual. The actual zeros are 3 halves and negative 5 thirds. I want a list of what might have worked. Well, the denominators are factors of 6, so I need to write all the factors of 6. And the numerator is the factors of negative 15. Okay, well, positive or negative, 1 goes into 15. Positive or negative, 3, 5, and 15 over 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, that's the setup. That's how you begin to write the possible zeros. Now, take all the numerators and write them over each one of these denominators. If I write them over plus and minus 1, I just get the list on the top. Plus or minus 1, 3, 5, and 15. If I write everything over 2, I also get a plus or minus a half, plus or minus 3 halves, plus or minus 5 halves, and plus or minus oops, 15 halves. Then write everything over 3. So plus or minus a third. And you're asking me, do I really need to do the plus and minus every time? Yeah, you do. So humor me, guys. It's not that hard. Just write the plus and minus. So there would be 1, which I already have. So then 5 thirds. And 15 thirds is 5, so I already got it. So then I go to 6. Plus and minus 1, 6. Plus and minus 3, 6 is a half. So then I get 5, 6. That's the next one. I already had a half. It's right there. And then 15 sixths, which would be 5 thirds. I already have it. So that's the complete list of the possible what ones might have worked. Out of all the ones you could imagine, all the fractions I could invent, like 7 fifths. See how 7 fifths is not in that list? It's because it can't be a possible zero. Because it's not a factor of the leading coefficient and the um, end coefficient. Okay. So that's just generating a list of possible. Here's the rational zero theorem. Given a uh, polynomial, all the possible rational zeros are just as I told you. Factors of the last term over factors of the leading coefficient. The next step is you're going to graph them on your graphing calculator so you can narrow down the choices from this first step. After you've done that, 
I'll explain. Watch out for double zeros in a minute. You're going to set your table to ask and enter those all the values that you that you refined your guess to be. Not all the values in this list here. No, you're not going to enter all those in your calculator. You're going to graph it so you can predict, guess which ones might be it. Um, so I'll explain that a little more as we go in this example. I've already done some graphing. I've already done some work. So bear with me on this. The possible rational zeros are all the factors of 24 plus and minus 1, 2, 3, 4, pack of a 4. Let me fix it so you guys don't get cranky at me because um, you guys do that so frequently. 4, 6, 8, 12, 24 over plus or minus 1, whoops, 2, plus or minus 3, and 6. Now, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and write all the actual possible zeros. So you'd, everything is over 1. I know it's tedious. Trust me, I'm the one that's sitting here doing this, and I'm the one that already knows how to do it. So imagine how I feel. All right. 24, then I have to put everything over 2, so I get a half. Um, 3 halves. Uh, I'm doing halves, so 3 halves. 4 halves is 2, 6, so everything else is already there. Then I get a third. 2 thirds. Um, 3 thirds is 1, 4 thirds. Six, I got eight thirds. Uh, Twelve and twenty-four already there, so I get plus or minus a sixth. Uh, two six, I got as a third. Three six, four six, six six, eight six uh, would be four thirds. I already got it. And so everything else I already got. So that was the end. Now you're supposed to then graph it and use this list of possible rational zeros to help you see which ones are actual. And that's your first guess. You're using it to refine your list. Now, one, two, three. I really don't need a list to help me get that negative three might be a, an actual zero. But this one, sometimes the graphs actually are hard to tell. Now, I've made the scale pretty big. So it's only five, negative five, 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 negative five. But sometimes when your graph is bigger, it's really hard to tell. Is that going to be a half or is that going to be two or negative a half or is it negative two thirds? Well, I'm not sure at this point. So you could stick it on the list. I'm pretty sure it's going to be negative a half because it looks more like that. But I'm saying at the scale, that's what you're using this list for. So you're not just randomly trying numbers. I mean, is it three fifths? Is it two fifths? Well, you know, you have a hard time telling from the graph. Okay, that's what this list is going to do for you. Coming over here, are you going to say one and a half? Well, one and a half isn't on the list. Oh, I lied. There it is. Uh, three halves. I apologize. Um, four thirds. One and a third. You know, it's kind of hard to tell for me. Is one and a third? Is it one and a quarter? Um, I don't have one and a quarter to work with. So it looks like it's a choice of those two. And then this one, I'm betting, is two. Let's go to second window on your calculator. And you're going to scroll down, arrow down, using your arrow keys, and choose the independent variable to ask. When you do that, and you go second graph, your table should show up blank. And what you're going to do is you're going to enter these values in to see which ones are actually zeros. Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for which ones are zeros. In order to be zeros, they need to return a y value of zero. So putting in the negative 3, which was the first choice, yes, it is a zero. Negative a half, yep, it's a zero. One and a third, so that would be the four thirds, yep, it's a zero. Two, it is indeed a zero. If I put one and a half in, this one 
you'll see that it didn't give me a zero. So this is not a zero, as well as if I had typed that one in, this would not be a zero either. So what are the actual zeros? Negative three, negative a half, four thirds, and two. Okay. Here's another one. What are the possible zeros? Plus or minus one, two, four, I don't know, my fours always turn out so wacky. Five, ten, and twenty over plus or minus one, two, three, four, geez, six, twelve. No, that's it. All right. Now, in the interest of time for this video, I'm not going to write them all out like I had here. Okay, you guys can do that on your own. That is an expectation, but trying to keep the video short, I'm not going to write it out. Then you graph it. So that's a list of the possible zeros. Real zeros, I guess I should make that point because you're not getting anything that involves I. You're not getting anything that involves square roots. Sorry, I kept saying real, the rational. I apologize, not real, rational. Rational numbers, anything that can be is a fraction. So it's not going to find square roots. I think I said that wrong on the previous page, so I apologize. I caught it now, though. All right. From this list, I narrowed it down to plus and minus. Let's just look at it. So there would be um, negative a half, it looks like, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'll go back and look up. Negative one, two and a half. Negative two and a half. This looks like, I don't know, maybe a third, somewhere in there. I'll see what's in my list in a minute. One, two, three, four, and four. Okay, going up here, five halves is on the list. It's out here, it's right here. Negative a half. Yep, I've got negative a half right there. I've also got negative a third. I got negative two thirds. So can I really super duper tell? I don't know. I'm swing and check. Negative a half, negative two thirds. I'm not feeling so good about negative a third, but anyways, it's there. It's a possibility. Um, coming over, I got, I got a half. I've got a third. Okay. Um, I got two thirds. So I'm narrowing it down, seeing anything. Two thirds to me seems like it'd be farther over, so I doubt it's that. Um, and four is indeed on the list. My messed up looking four. Okay, then you go to the table once again with this equation in the in the calculator and you check and see which ones are indeed zeros by seeing which one gives you y values of zeros. Okay, so that's what you guys need to do. And then write your actual list of rational zeros. Okay, now this is just the beginning. You guys are going to be finding things that are going to be irrational zeros and imaginary zeros. That's coming. But for now, you're just using it to find the rational zeros.